welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of what looks and crooks I'll be sitting here talking about crooks while I give you an amazing amazing look so for today I'm actually going to be for the first time trying trying hmm? to do an eyeshadow look because I don't put on eyeshadow I ever have I've never seen the girls points behind doing the entire eyeshadow but I'm gonna try it today now for today's case we're going to be talking about mr. Simon Levayev aka the man who scammed all these bitches period now if you haven't seen the Netflix documentary that was released right before Valentine's Day and that had everyone and they got their mama up in apprehending unlawful violence and fear we're gonna talk about it today who is Simon Levayev you may want to ask me so Simon Levayev was actually born in 1990 he is a Jewish person he was born in Israel not to say that only Israel only produces Jews before you guys come for me or whatever and he was actually born into a very orthodox Jewish family and they gave him a very orthodox Jewish name his name was Shimon Yahuda Hayut but for this video we're gonna be talking about him like as Simon Levayev because that's who he infamously became like period not much um, is known about Simon's childhood but judging from the area where he lived he didn't really grow up so privileged so Simon actually went to um, Jewish schools his parents were very Orthodox as I said and they wanted him to really grow up in the faith you know what I'm saying um, Simon's childhood not much is really known about him but one thing is known about Simon throughout his life he's always wanted the finer things in life miss girl but the problem is his parents were not really rich they weren't even even like average middle class because like they were broke they weren't like broke to the point where they were obviously sleeping hungry or whatever but they weren't like rich neither were they like upper middle class they were just you know surviving their bills their day-to-day -day life now he actually received news at the age of 15 that he was going to be going with his family friends to stay with them for a while in Brooklyn USA now for those of you who know Brooklyn is the ghetto and for those of you who also know that um if you're going to America something that's really popular in America and it's really not popular everywhere else in the world and I'll never understand why it's so popular in America is a credit card his family friends had a credit card where they would obviously like buy things and the one thing you should always know about a credit card is whatever you buy with that card you're gonna have to pay back so like you're in debt so Simon didn't probably get this memo understandably because you know he isn't really he's not from the US he doesn't understand how these credit card things work and as he's there he actually racks up such a stupid amount of money on his credit card on his on this family's credit card that the family now decides you know what Simon we gonna send you back and they sent him back because they were like obviously he's a thief like you can't use that much money but according to Simon he actually didn't know like like he wasn't trying to fuck around he genuinely didn't know that you know what this and this amount of money is not to be trifled with on this card there's a limit of spending on this card and you're you're gonna get us in debt so he was sent back to um, Israel While in Israel Simon had now learned something very very bad in his life he had learned that he can steal money instead of actually going out to work and this now became his MO he was now a thief he was now a blur blur a burglar he was now a burglar Simon really didn't see the point of working anymore because you know the thing is once you taste free money it's very difficult to like get off the free money I'm sorry to be the person to tell you so this really marked a turning point in Simon's life because from this point henceforth even when he got jobs he got jobs with the intent to steal from the jobs yeah chat. yeah 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 there's people like that real money heist shit so he actually got a series of jobs when he was back in Israel he got a job as a babysitter where he stole <laughs> he left the baby unattended to go and 
to you. It's not that he stole something small, though. He stole um a checkbook. And if you know one thing about a checkbook, um all the person needs to do is just sign, and you can even fill in the, your own documents for yourself, like the amount of money you want. So he really tried to def commit fraud. That was literal fraud. From he also stole from another family as when he was um hired working as a handyman. And by this time he's actually 21. If I forgot to mention, so Simon is really by the time you're 21 and your own source of income, your your only source of income that you're looking for is stealing and that's your own source of income like from today till tomorrow to next week and next year that's all you want to do with yourself simon was he was giving at best money highs. at this point simon as i said had stole a checkbook and he went to actually try and cash the checks from the checkbook even before the people found out you know it was missing etc etc and the people at the bank said oh, wait a minute this ain't your shit and obviously if you're going to usually what happens at banks because they are reputable establishments they usually have to call you know the person trying to send you money especially if it's like from a check and they have to you know be like hi yeah are you actually the person sending this money because like i said it's very easy to defraud somebody when you have stolen their checkbook that's basically assuming somebody else's identity as the bank is calling this guy the guy said absolutely no <laughs> Absolutely no, I did not give him my checkbook. Why is he even there in the first place? And things are looking quite quite hectic for Simon at this point. So when Simon hears, you know, you you gonna go to jail and his trial is being set and things are actually looking like they're about to be very, 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 very serious for Simon. So Simon decides make a jackpot and he actually ran away from Israel. He managed to get a fake passport and he actually managed to cross his way into Jordan. Simon is on the run. He tries to now establish himself, like tries to establish a plan as to what he's gonna do because as I said, when your primary source of income is money, it not go end well for you. You 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 never will see light. You never see a brightness of day. That somebody is going to work for their money. You just day waiting for the person to come back. Yeah, you are wicked for that. You are wicked for that. And you are wicked for that. Anyway, Simon is now really really on the run, and he's on the run with um his now his new name is Mordecai Tapiro. And by this time it's 2012 and the court the courts actually back home have indicted him and indicting him is like when the court really says like no you actually are a thief like you is a thief he's actually really scared because he's never really been in this kind of position before like he's stolen but he's never had like any serious repercussion for his acts of thieving and his acts of theft so now um he's in jordan and he's really like trying to keep a low profile but he's still stealing like you guy how are you on the run for theft and you're still thefting like it just doesn't make any good goddamn sense so by this point simon is actually trying to keep a low profile so his thefts are not grandiose thefts that are going to really alert the the government where he is and um he goes on the low for some time and no one actually hears about him until he emerges in Finland. This is like where Simon really like learned his craft like he really got into his craft because over in Finland Simon realized that if he just got himself to be attractive like real and not that he was no he wasn't attractive I'm sorry I was gonna come here and try to do political correct but I actually don't care like I'm so sorry I really don't give a fuck but he wasn't really the most attractive guy and by this time Simon had now realized that if he can actually get himself to look more attractive and like appealing to women then he can actually be able to scam them and do the scam 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 but by this point he was still like doing just he would actually have to meet the female and then he would like proceed on the scamming and simon's big wallop was not yet on social media etc he was still relying on like face to face etc etc so he would meet these women and he would tell these women that he is the son of a arms dealer and he's the heir to an arms dealing fortune and if you know one thing about these arms dealing families they are always with the enemies child they always have an enemy running after them coming after them coming to kill them etc 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 so it wasn't difficult for these girlies because if you've seen a movie or two from hollywood you already know what's up with these holly with these families so it wasn't hard for simon to convince these women that his enemies are always after his enemies Ra, ra. even me have enemies even me have enemies. He would always do it like gradually. It wouldn't be at he met you today and he's like, yeah, my enemies are after me because obviously you as a normal human being would be like, yeah, this is several red flags. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be a part of this. So Simon would always make sure that he waits 
for you to like establish a relationship start to know him and then he'd like do that thing that guys do to girls to get them really in the in the in the hooks of it in the crannies of it he would now open up and he would open up to these women and he'd be like oh my god yeah hi he'd open up to these women and tell them um i never wanted to tell you this because i didn't want you to think that you know i'm trying to scar like i'm trying to play with you but i just want you to be safe and i want you to know that the business that i'm in like the fa my family business is not safe it's not like the best thing um you know because enemies are always after me and he usually did this like a few months into dating so you already have fallen for him by that point and he's been perfect all this time and he hasn't lied to you and he said he's gonna come see you he comes etc so you already your guard is down so you would tend to believe simon do this and he actually did it to three women and when he did this a few months after telling you about his enemies it would now he would now tell you you'd get like a random call in the middle of the night and he would tell you yeah 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 my enemies have found out my location he would say my enemies have found out my location send money now send money now if you're kenyan you know this kind of thing if you're kenyan you know this is something like as i was even watching the documentary i was thinking like as a kenyan i can't fall for this do you know how many messages we receive in kenya like that do you know how many messages we receive in kenya like that in kenya you go just day you hear your phone vu vu hi Oh my god, I'm stranded at the police station. <laughs> and you're like, Auntie, am I your man? Like, go and call your man. Why are you getting a random number? You don't even know if I'm a witch doctor. Do you know I can juju you now? I can just steal your destiny like that and you won't do anything because you're stupid. You are foolish. Anyway, so Simon would then tell these women that, hey, my enemies are after me. I really need you to send me money. And these women obviously not not thinking anything is wrong. You're thinking this is my boyfriend. Obviously, if he has an issue, he's going to come to me. They send him the money. And this is where the clown shit really begins. Because Simon would not actually hit. He wouldn't like go for women that are extremely rich. It is, he would go for very like middle class women who can like obviously afford to pay their bills. But they can't afford to be in debt. If you get what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say to you. So Simon did this and he would get this money from these women and he would promise I'm gonna pay you back so that you can pay back the bank. And obviously these women are believing him because he said he's the son of a millionaire. And this time his scam wasn't like so grand but it was like grand enough for you to believe that hey he's actually the son of you know a billionaire, a be millionaire, a be trillionaire. So Simon would ask these girls send me money. They sent him money and when they did simon would just keep on telling them i'm gonna pay you back i'm gonna pay you back i'm gonna pay you back and in finland he actually did this to three women the authorities actually caught him when he was in finland simon simon was trying to say that he should be taken back to israel because he's an israeli citizen and that's where he wants to stand trial and that he's not um a citizen of finland so he shouldn't be able to stand trial there the only reason simon was actually saying this is simply and simply because simon knew damn well that if he stood trial in Finland, he would get like a longer sentence because obviously his crimes were more serious when he went to Finland. This didn't work and the Finnish authorities arrested him and they charged him in a Finnish jail, in a Finnish court and he went to Finnish prison. And when he was in jail, Simon didn't like take this time to reflect on, you know, what he had done and you know, what you would think somebody would be doing in jail. No, he didn't do that. Instead, he took this time to really think, fuck. Where the fuck did I mess up in that plan? That plan was solid, A1 solid. How the hell did they catch me? So you would think Simon would have come out remorseful. No, no, no. He came out vengeful. He came out gunning for everybody and their mama. And he decided that actually his issue was not the fact that he refused to work for his money like everybody else worked for their money. He decided that his issue was actually the fact that, you know, that those women didn't believe and give him enough time to pay him, for him to be able to pay off his debt. So he blamed the women, naturally. Why wouldn't he? And he decides now, he says, you know what, I'm gonna... I'm gonna up my game. He now decides to become Mr. Attractive. If he decides to oppress these women. Simon now gets on Tinder and he decides that's where he's going to really be, you know, carrying out his wahala. Simon's Tinder had him on yachts. It had him on like private jets. And he just looked like he was living life. And I'm not gonna lie, I've not been on these Tinder apps, but Misha, me, when I see that 
I'm not gonna lie, even me, I want to be on private yachts and, and, and shit like that. And every time Simon would make a match, he would take this girl, he would almost answer like almost immediately. He would be like, hi. So like you swipe right, he's like, hi, how, how are you? It's like, uncle, like for someone who's busy, you really on this app. But anyway, because people like to believe they're lucky and the brain really does, the human brain really does like to believe that you're lucky and also you, you're special. So you you wouldn't think it's suspicious that this guy that claims to be so busy all the time is all of a sudden online. You just think, you know, it's my lucky day. When he so when Simon gets a right swipe, he would text these women and he would immediately schedule for them to meet. When Simon went on the dates with these women, he would immediately start to basically, you know, what is it called? Program their mind. To who he was he would show them pictures of him with the billionaire um that he was trying to say he was the son of mr levayev i'm not sure his first name uh but he was like the diamond typhoon in israel and he was israel he's an israeli russian diamond typhoon so simon would like show him th these women pictures of him and his father and his mother and they were just traveling the world having a really nice time living really great lives and these women would really fall for simon immediately now i'm not saying these women are gold diggers but i also feel like sometimes you know don't be so quick to just assume and think you've just hit the jackpot. One good thing about one thing about the lottery and why it is the lottery is that not everybody wins it. But I can understand how the human mind wants to think, you know, you are the one who is the chosen one. You are the girl who is the chosen girl. Now, the first of the women who he really scammed now when he was in Europe, because if I forgot to mention when he left Finland, he went to Europe, was a woman named Cecile. I don't know how to say sh sh I don't know how to say it, so I'll just put I'll put her name down here. Cecile is a 33-year-old Norwegian woman. She's actually very beautiful. She was a hopeless. She is not even was because even after all this wahala with Simon, Cecile is still very much so the hopeless romantic. She loves love. She loves to be in love. She loves, you know, her favorite movie is Beauty and the Beast, and she said that, you know, somebody just coming and rescuing you from everything. That's all she wants in this life, and that's. That's understandable, but like, Miss Girl, that's how you got into this situation in the first place, isn't it? Miss Girl. But when Cecile first matched with Simon on Tinder, it was 2018, and she had actually been on the app for a long time, so she really knew, like, the nooks and crannies to check out the, if you want to know, like, if a guy is legit or if he's lying. And usually, apparently, according to what everybody has said, you have to, like, if a person has, like, their Instagram in their bio on Tinder, oh, he's serious, serious. He's serious, serious. He's legit, legit. But I don't think you guys realize that social media is really packaging, but hey, that's just me. So she looked at his Instagram, looked at everything, his profile, and she decided, yeah, this is the guy for me. Um, she hit him up and as soon as she hit him up, Simon actually hit her up back immediately, like I said. And he actually told her, you know what, I'm in the city right now. She was in London at the moment and she was like, I'm in the city right now and I'd really like if we could meet up. And I'm leaving London tomorrow, but I really want to see you. So Cecile is like, okay, oh my god, oh my god, I have to go and see him. And Simon actually invites her to like a five-star restaurant and it was really like a night of her dreams. Like she didn't believe it because even like as she met him, apparently he was very attentive to everything she said. He literally listened to everything she said and if, like he wanted to hear all about her. And apparently he actually had to leave that same night, but he was really sad that he had to leave. So he actually invited Cecile to come with him to to Bulgaria and as Cecile is like okay fine then I'll come with you to Bulgaria Simon actually assigns for her like a personal chauffeur to take Cecile to go and collect all her shit and she's packing her life and she's just packing up everything and she's like I'm surrendering to him I, I just want to go and all her friends are obviously looking at her like she's mad now you are the kind of women who usually she was the kind of women who just thought her friends are just being worried for nothing and this is the kind of this is why sometimes I don't like and you guys can call me a pick me girl if you want me to if you want to call me a pick me girl but sometimes this is why I don't like being friends with females because you tell women like hey this what you're doing is actually a bit of a madness and they'll just be like yeah you're jealous you're jealous you're just jealous so her friends want her she no greedy, really, sir. So she decided to go on the Simon Levayev train.
and go did she, dear. Aha! Uh -huh. Go did she, honey. Gets in the car with her and the chauffeur and she's driven to a private airstrip, you know, for Simon's private plane. And as they're about to board the plane, she sees a woman with a baby. Ah! Not Simon's baby mama! Simon's baby mama is also there. Now, Cecile finds this weird because it's like, damn, like, how are you two, how are you this okay with your, with your baby daddy? Like, how are you this okay? And she also felt a bit weird because it's like, why am I, like, finding out you have a daughter on the first date? Which is now funny because if now he didn't tell you, you would have come here tomorrow to come cry for us. He didn't even tell me that he had an entire baby. So it's like, bitch, calm down. Even Yusef, you're doing a lot like... Yusef, relax. They get on the train and her and Simon's, you know, baby mama are really having the time of their lives. They're kiki king, they're ha ha ha. You know, obviously life must seem fun and funny when you're in a private jet. So Simon and Cecile are really hitting it off at this point. And Cecile actually said like by this time she was already like really into him. She's really falling for him and when they get to the hotel room, ETC, he's busy for a few days and everything but they actually got to spend some time in Bulgaria together. And this was like an all expenses paid trip. So I just know that Miss Honey, Miss Girl was having the time of her life. Like even me, I want to go to Bulgaria. If anybody was wondering entire time they're Bulgaria they, they actually ended up sleeping together and Cecile was like really locked on Simon he and her became an official item when they went back home and you know everything was really going great for the two of them now by this point is when Simon decided to pull his my enemies you know remember his enemies his enemies were still after him so Simon tells Cecile that he needs to tell her something, he needs to open up to her, you know, before they can decide to be official and whatnot, whatnot. And he tells her that if you want to be with me, you just have to always know my enemies always are after me. Like, my enemies know they sleep. They know they tire. This girl really, really said this really even made her trust him even more. But she, like, you know, when there's the inevitability of losing something, you cherish it a bit more. And I must say, Simon knew that better than anybody because if you know one thing about love, love is very sweet. Like it's very sweet when it feels like it's forbidden or it might end at any moment. So he really preyed on that part of the human psyche because when human beings know they can lose something in a heartbeat, they tend to cherish it more and they tend to be more attentive to that thing. In a year, her and him actually decide to get into a, you know, to get an apartment together because he was always traveling etc etc and she was like she misses him and he was like okay how about we get a place together so when I'm ever I'm in town I actually just come over to your place and me and you can just chill and relax and do do the doing things do the naughty doing things and so now Cecile is looking for a house for the two of them to be together but Simon is very much so busy flying around the world you know on business trips but reality speaking he was not on business trips like, as I said you could always trust in Simon to not work you could always trust him that when his mates are working him he's busy stealing he's waiting for you to come back home with the monies so that he can steal the monies anyway so as uh, Cecile is very much so busy looking for the apartment, she actually is very much so still in contact with Simon and Simon is traveling around the world but he still has time to pick up her calls etc etc and it's at this point that you know their relationship is at their strongest etc Simon now sends her a text. And the text is very much so in the middle of the night. So, you know, when somebody texts you at that hour of the night, you obviously know this shit is serious. Like, this is not a joke. People don't just wake up in the middle of the night and they're like, hmm, I choose violence. I choose violence, yeah? Unless, like, you're an African parent. But he really woke up in the middle of the night and he chose violence. And he sent um, Cecile a text and said that bodyguard Peter had actually been, um, you know, in a brawl because his enemies had... His enemies. His enemies had found out his location and had come to kill him. And if not for Peter, hmm? if not for Peter, Simon would have just timed it like that. He would have just died. And this girl obviously back home is really worried. And the situation just seems to keep on escalating and escalating. This girl keeps on, Cecile now, keeps on receiving more and more um, videos from Simon telling her that, oh my God, my enemies don't catch me. They don't catch me. I need to be on the run, etc. And Cecilia, Cecile is like, you know, I keep on calling this girl Cecilia. Cecile is just like, okay, why don't you come back home, come to me, and we can, you know, we can see how this is all going to go. I need to see you're okay, etc., etc. So Simon says, okay, he comes back home. He comes to see her. 
so as she's now with him in the house they're discussing they're discussing this man now receives a call from his bodyguard and he's like oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh he picks up the call from his bodyguard and his bodyguard is like right your enemies have found out where you are staying you need to go bros this guy now starts telling this simon boy off your lights you need to off your lights right now your enemies they know where you are actually as we are speaking like this they're in hot pursuit they're in hot pursuit you need to even lie down on that ground so cecile now is there really panicked she's panicking her life away she's wondering oh my god what am i going to do this man has now brought the gangsters to my house and Simon now tells Cecile that he needs to go, but he'll be in contact with her. And Cecile is like, okay, fine then, but you better not cut me the fuck off. Because I'm not playing these games with you, Sam. I ain't playing these games with you, Sam. And Simon says, fine. So as Simon now leaves the house, he obviously gives me Cecile a kiss, etc. And the next time Cecile hears from Simon, he's now telling her that, you know, I've managed to get away from my enemies, but, you know, there's a still a little bit of a problem. And Cecile is like, what's the problem, baby boo? Simon is just like, I need money because all my accounts have been frozen. And he's just like, I need some money to, you know, just live, you know, for just the next two weeks. And I'll return for you the money, baby. I swear to God, I'll return for you the money. And by this time, obviously, Cecile and Simon's relationship is very much so established. Because like I said, they're even looking to move in together. Like, everything has really been going great for the two of them. And Cecile is like, obviously, he's my boyfriend. Where else the fuck would I have him go? for some money so cecile is like fine she sends him his Amer her american express card and it's a credit card why do people use credit cards like i don't get it i don't get it's like taking a fucking loan like why do you people do this americans give me blood pressure blood pressure blood pressure it reaches simon simon says thank you but within the period of the next two weeks cecile would actually end up withdrawing 185 thousand pounds worth of debt and loans in credit cards etc etc because simon and simon would constantly call cecile and tell cecile that hey look yeah um this money is not enough hey yeah look i need more money i need more money and cecile really didn't know how to say no to simon because on her in her head if she doesn't give simon this money his enemies will catch him now wondering like for somebody who has enemies like that like you truly are living your best life sir and she tries to question simon about it like how come you're not even texting or calling and the only time you contact me is because you want money because you're saying your enemies are after you but you keep on posting like where you are on your tinder you're still active on your instagram you're still active so like what the fuck simon and simon tells this girl that no babe don't worry about it like you're the only girl for me you're the only girl that i love you're the only one that i want etc 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 and miss girl falls for simon's shenanigans it now becomes a serious issue for her financially because as the more she keeps on sending um simon money the less money she has for herself and obviously you know one thing about banks if you didn't know one thing about banks banks love to come and collect their check that's why i can never use these credit cards and do all these things because i know banks love to come and collect their good goddamn grimy check and if you thought for a good second that a bank was gonna leave you with their check you are mad banks are now calling miss cecile telling her yeah 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 we need our money we need it now you took a loan you took you you have credit card debts and she had taken loans and credit card debts from like various various companies and it was now becoming like okay miss girl do you ever plan to give us back our monies if no say so that we can come and collect your shit because that's what we really want that's how banks really operate so now Cecile is now calling um, Simon and she's like, Simon, hey, yeah, I need that money, I need that money. And Simon keeps on ch telling her, oh, yeah, I've sent money, I've sent money, check. Cecile, by this point, is now trying to um, meet up with Simon so that she can get a check so that she can pay her bills because her bills ain't paid, bitch. And Cecile and Simon meet up and she says when they meet up, like, it was like they were never even together. She says it was like completely meeting like a different person. She was like the person that she met was literally not her boyfriend. That's not who she fell in love with. And Simon was treating her like shit to say the least. She was obviously heartbroken but by this point like she tried everything but the relationship was dead. And good for her because she didn't realize that the entire time Simon was claiming to be on the run. He was actually not on the run. He was not on the run and he was not doing business. What Simon was actually doing was far more dubious the entire time simon claimed that he was on um 
that he was on the run it was during summer and during summer he had actually gotten another right swipe on cinder from a girl named miss Prenilla, and i'll put her um surname down here because i don't know how to say her surname but she but she he got his right swipe from miss Prenilla, and they met up um and him and her they didn't really hit it off she didn't really like him and she's a boss ass bitch so like she she really was like yeah i don't like you and i aspire because wow like the quickness with which she just turned him down she didn't even want to hear again she just said yeah i think we're better off as friends and friends they were they became really good friends her and him constantly went on like um constantly talked on the phone etc etc and actually what happened was when how he met up with her when he was on the run quest quote unquote he actually texted her and told her hey let's um spend the summer together because he saw on her snap or instagram or something that she was in a specific country that he was about to go to so he texts her he tells her yeah what's up he hits her up and they decide to spend a summer together all expenses paid by mr simon Simon pays for everything, they're spending money on money and all the money that Simon is getting for Pranilla and his entire entourage of friends, he's getting it from the loans Miss Cecile is taking. By the way, niggas will not kill you in this life. Niggas will not kill you in this life. Will they? No, they won't. No, they won't. They won't. There was no need for her to take those loans. I'm so sorry. And people online are trying to tell me that, oh my God, no, you know, she, she was in love. You can't fault her for love. We can't fault her for being in love, but we can't fault her for being stupid. Because there's no man that's making me take a loan. A bank loan? You guys don't know. The bank is too dangerous to play with. And then furthermore, to find out that that nigga was using that money on another bitch. And not just any other bitch. An entire entourage of bitches? Nah, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm so tired, please. So Simon was using all this money on Pranilla. And when the summer ended, Simon was like, we should all get together again, etc. Because he and Pranilla by this point were like, besties, besties. Because there was no sexual chance of them ever happening and they had established that like um as soon as they tried out the whole dating when they met on tinder they tried the whole dating for the two of them it didn't work so they had really decided to be friends and by the end of this summer he and Pranilla were really like besties besties for real like bffs forever now simon decides i'm actually not gonna do the rest of my face like i'm just gonna let this sit because i'm tired I'll do the other in the next video. Simon and Pranilla have, they're now sending each other memes, doing the kiki ki ha 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 after the whole holiday because obviously you, even you, you'll be friends with somebody that you spent your entire holiday with, you guys laughed, you lol'd, yolo'd the entire summer together. And all of a sudden, Simon now tells Miss Pranilla that the enemies, because by this time he had already told Pranilla, as I said, he establishes friendship, etc, then tells you about his enemies, and by this time he had told Miss Pranilla about his enemies. So he now calls Pranilla in the middle of the night and he sends her the exact same text he had sent to Cecile about you know he's being robbed his enemies are after him etc etc he sends that exact same thing to Miss Prenilla and he tells Prenilla please send me some money I promise to pay you back my accounts are frozen etc etc and Prenilla says okay fine I'll send you some money Prenilla sends him this money what Simon says he needs more and mind you Pranilla's money was actually from her savings account so babes wasn't even on credit yet like she was still using her savings miss girl was a bad bitch because apparently in these western countries when you're not living like on your um credit card you actually a badass bitch so she sends him 30,000 I don't know dollars or pounds and he basically blew through the entire money because he was spending 20,000 dollars per every two days so 10k 10k a day so he probably blew this through this money like in three days child he was like yeah i need more he calls her he tells her she he needs more and miss pranilla is like okay fine she sends him some more money and by this time she's now starting to chip into her american express credit card throw the credit cards away She's now trying to call Simon. She keeps on trying to call him and she's like, I need money, I need money now and I need money quickly. And Simon now tells Miss Pranilla, okay, fine, I've sent you money. The same thing he did to Cecile. He's telling her, I've sent you money, I've sent you money. But in the realities of the situations was that there was no money that was actually sent to Miss Pranilla. Simon is like, fine. And he's like, come to me and I'll give you a watch that you can sell. Miss Pranilla goes to him and when she's on her way to, like, when she's getting herself together to go to Simon, she now receives a message from a journalist 
who has been working with Cecile. Remember Miss Cecile, the first girl? Yeah, Miss Cecile was tired of crying. She had cried, 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 cried. And she said she has to expose Simon for the kind of scummer, the scum, scum he is. So she got in touch with a, with a journalist. And this journalist has now gotten in touch with Prenilla because they're trying to build a case against Simon. Prenilla is now called. Prenilla is like, okay, fine. She she picks it up and everything and everything is going really really smoothly She now helps the journalists actually get like eyes on Simon so they can know that okay He's in this specific country. He's not gonna run We need to get this news about him out and Pranilla helps these journalists and by the end of it all Pranilla and you know Cecile become like friends and they realize that the money that he was taking from Cecile He was spending on Pranilla and Pranilla clocked it that no 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 This must be a bigger organization because like your bank accounts like the amount of money Cecile was giving Simon versus the amount of money Simon was spending in a day they weren't adding up Cecile wasn't giving him much Im Im enough money for him to continue to like do all the things that he was doing so she realized that it must be a bigger scam and they now were really committed to you know going public with this entire thing so Simon and um miss so now Pranilla and Cecile get together and they compact this entire they did some bite like that's what I want Charlie's Angels to be about I want it to be about bad bitches doing bad bitch things and without having to force it like without having to do like oh they're just like you you get what I mean I feel like Charlie Angels forces the bad bitch aspect but I'm, I'm not gonna be the one to say it anyway so they now come together do all this um they do all this under undercover investigative work and they finally release an article and simon's third and final babe girl was actually currently on a flight on her way to see simon simon levayev she now sees on her phone and she's about to enter they're about to take off she sees on her phone like this um article from this magazine in norway and they've released it and it's such a big thing it was getting hit after hit after hit after hit and her friends are now sending it to her this now the baby girl her friends are sending it to them they're like ain't this your man and i hate i hate people please i hate people i know i know one girl came there with morale she was like ain't this your nigga i'm sorry but ain't this your nigga in this, show, this third girl's name was aileen charlotte for her i can't say her name i'm so sorry like these girls' names are very difficult. They're very difficult. Aileen works in luxury fashion. So she would get the clothes of like the the clothes that these like rich girlies don't want to wear anymore, the designer clothes, and she would actually sell them on eBay. And so when she saw this, she sends it to Simon and Simon is trying to blow up her phone ETC, but she was actually like, as I said, she was about to like go on a flight and she was like, you know what, she's just gonna, she's gonna off her phone because she obviously had to before, you know, she speaks to Simon or anything, she's gonna have to do some small investigations of her own. And that is when now she's doing the investigations and she's on the flight and she realizes that this Simon bastard was a con artist. She looks at the pictures, at the everything and she realizes that, oh my God. The time stamps of when Simon was flying out Prenilla or flying out this other girl, they were aligning with the time stamps when Simon was in her country to be coming to see her. He would fly her out to Amsterdam and Aileen would be in Amsterdam and they would meet in Amsterdam with Simon. So it's like, Simon, you little snake ass bitch. And she wasn't finding it funny. Now Simon had taken like just a little bit like just a smidget of money from Aileen compared to the others and she said no she's gonna get her money back. She decided she was gonna be a smart bitch about this and she didn't like call him and confront him and shout for him which is like what Pranilla did as soon as she found out she was being scammed I forgot to mention she actually called him and shouted for him and Simon was like you're gonna regret this you dumb bitch which is the same thing he did to Cecile but that was like his MO so when she saw what this guy would do like when you call him and alert him she decided she was gonna just pretend you know she didn't like she was still on Simon's side so when she lands she actually texts Simon she's like no don't worry about these bitches baby whatever whatever and she really realized that she was the only one who could help Simon because the entire world was now against Simon Levayev. So she now goes to his, she goes to his house and she's literally finding this man crying. His entire life is just going to shit. He just doesn't understand himself. All of a sudden he says he wants to do plastic surgery. The plastic surgeon said no because the kind of surgery you want was was face reconstruction and the surgeon said you know I can't do this kind of thing. That's literally what criminals ask for. So he cries, he cries, he cries and Aileen is like hey how about I help you sell some of your stuff on eBay and you can get some money because that was her job and Simon was like yes 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 so the next day Aileen actually packs three 
big suitcases of Simon's most fashionable Louis Gucci go see go see so we go see suit and she takes the money she takes the bags and she had no intent of ever returning over the next few weeks she sold half of all her of half of all his clothes she sold the clothes kept the money from the designer clothes chair and she paid herself off and she said like that's the least that simon could have actually done for her yeah she continued to play this game back and forth with him he tried to threaten her told her send me money now or whatever 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 he now started trying to black emotionally blackmail her the way he was used to emotionally blackmailing people telling her if she doesn't send any money he's going to be homeless he sends her pictures of him in a homeless house so fucking pathetic like not pathetic that he's homeless because homeless people are not pathetic but pathetic that he would think that she would feel bad for him because he's homeless following his his own conundrum like what bro what and he tells her like yeah 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 um actually i'm going to try and run because the police are really looking for me and that's when miss girl girl was like okay you're trying to run she got the information of his flight details got everything and had him actually arrested when he landed in greece so yeah simon was arrested in 2019 in greece but his sentence was actually 15 months but he only served for five months because this is the world we live in where you can just rob women and does that, that imagine if it was a woman that robbed men the fucking gallows anyway but yeah guys all i can say about this entire case is respect yourself <laughs> respect yourself and i know like people like to do especially with this whole romanticize your life online and on social media people like to do like you have to believe you are the girl to become the girl but sometimes think about things in a very skeptical manner think some things are very like very convenient and good to be true somebody who has so many enemies is very very active on instagram all his social medias and everything and he's still active as he's on the run from his 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 enemies like and especially these sons of billionaires trillionaires etc they're not usually on social media at it like that the pro possibility of it is very very rare it's very very rare and the fact that he would meet you without any form of bodyguard around him etc he's just met you in the lobby of his hotel what and he's the son of a billionaire what and his enemies are always after him what furthermore if his enemies have always been after at the after if his enemies have always been after him and he knows that his enemies have always been after him wouldn't the smart thing to do to stash would be to stash money like in a launder like money kind of laundering house would that not be the smart thing to do or maybe me i don't know you know maybe me i'm just not the girl that knows but to me i feel like that would be the smart thing to do not to be begging your baby mamas for money but anyway guys that is today's case i didn't really do much like evidence of this case i just wanted to come here and tell the story because i really liked the story and i just thought hmm, this would be good for my youtube channel and so yeah guys um please watch the netflix documentary very very interesting stuff and i will see you guys in my next one i'm going to actually beat my face you might see it next week you might see the week after i don't know i don't know i don't know but to the view three viewers who have watched this thank you so much for always visiting my channel and to anyone else who has watched this thank you so much for visiting my channel please hit subscribe and the notifications bell and if you want to be you know intrigued and into what i do every single day of my life follow me on instagram and on tiktok there will be the links in my description box bye